To celebrate everyone's favourite spooky month, I thought we should take a look at the scary side of Transformers. So in this video, we're looking at my top 15 scariest Transformers moments, or, put simply, 15 moments in Transformers that scared the ever-living crap out of me when I was younger, and admittedly still little today. The Generation 1 Marvel comic had some very strange and unsettling moments, though we'll get to the worst of that later on in this list. For starters, however, we look at the void known as Limbo that appeared in the UK portion of the comic. By the comic's logic, whenever characters time travelled, they displaced others and set them into a black void of nothingness. This was Limbo, and was the temporary home of Optimus, Ratchet, Prowl, Shockwave, Thundercracker and Frenzy after they were displaced due to the time travelling antics that occurred during Target 2006. They were accompanied by two warring alien races, and the Autobots attempted to intervene, until they discovered that it was all a ruse, and they were actually being attacked by some parasitic creatures. Ugh. Though they managed to escape, a little later in the comic when Galvatron returned to the past, the unfortunate Skids were sent to Limbo, and remained there for many years. When he did eventually return, he brought the creatures with him, but they were destroyed. Limbo would only be seen once more in the comic, when Optimus was sent there once again, but he was easily able to escape. Limbo still remains out there, waiting for someone to activate a time machine so the parasites can feast. The movies are filled with many dark and terrifying moments, specifically for the apparent target audience of little kids who paid to see Bumblebee beat up the evil bad guys, but instead get to see him tear Ravage in half and rip out his spine. Oh. My pick, however, is from Dark of the Moon, in which we get to see Laserbeak enacting his duties as the Decepticon's mercenary. In an earlier scene in the movie, we see Laserbeak disguising himself as a really unnerving pink version of Bumblebee and conversing with the daughter of one of his targets. All seems to be fine until the target arrives home and Laserbeak reverts to his usual form to act out his duties and kill the poor guy. The way the scene is presented, however, is what makes it so terrifying. Though it was Laserbeak's opening line that was really the icing on the cake to make this scene truly unsettling. Is your daddy home? For this pick, we once again visit the movieverse continuity, though this time the Titans comics. The character Dead End makes an appearance in several issues, though he isn't quite the same as how we remembered him in G1. Rather, he's a horrifying monster that is totally a vampire. See, Dead End was subject to experiments for a regeneration circuit that didn't go at all to plan, and instead of regenerating him, it began eating away at his body. Now essentially insane, Dead End began searching for spare parts to repair himself, and had many run-ins with the Autobots. What makes him so terrifying is the way he is presented in the comic. Not only does he speak in black speech bubbles that are somehow very unsettling, but he also looks like this. Perhaps the most unsettling of all of these was his run-in with Bumblebee, in which he attempted to tear the poor scout to pieces after locating and attacking Sam's house. Oh, and trying to eat Sam, by the way. Fortunately, Bumblebee was able to defeat him, but Dead End's fate was left ambiguous, meaning he's still out there, searching for spare parts. Beast Machines is easily the darkest Transformers show in existence, taking place entirely on a Cybertron ruled by Megatron. The only time we actually see colour, aside from blue, black and grey in the series, is the ending. However, when I watched the show when I was younger, I somehow managed to look past the dark environments and areas, and honestly horrifying appearances of the Maximals, and still managed to enjoy the show. Until these terrifying abominations showed up. The vehicle models in Beast Machines had very minimal appearances, and watching the show back today, I really don't understand why I found them so terrifying. But back then, when I watched the show, I was absolutely petrified of them, and whenever the Maximals went underground, I was terrified the mods would show up. And sometimes they did, and I almost wet my pants. Ugh, God damn it, stupid moles. Beast Wars is a very intriguing show that can somehow have one episode about Rhinox farts, and then another about this thing. Transmutate was a very emotional and tragic episode, about a malfunctioning protoform coming to life and Rampage forming a bond with the creature, though it was eventually destroyed by the conflict between the Maximals and Predacons, leaving Rampage distraught. Something about this episode just didn't sit right with me. Was it the Transmutate's terrifying face? Was it its voice that was eerily haunting? No. Hurt. Was it the violent Rampage's sudden change of heart? Or the screams of the Transmutate as it died? It was most likely a combination of all of these things that made this episode such a memorable and unique episode of Beast Wars. 
But seriously, you can't tell me you didn't find his face at least a little unsettling. I mentioned earlier that the G1 Marvel comics had some pretty messed up moments, and these next three choices will refer back to that. We begin with the utterly terrifying Ratchet and Megatron hybrid that came to life near the end of the comic. See, Ratchet had sacrificed himself to prevent Megatron from escaping in a portal, as the two of them were seemingly destroyed by bombs detonated from within the Ark. Or so everyone thought. No, instead of killing them, it created something even worse, as the portal somehow fused them together. The creature's most disturbing moment came in the issue The Price of Life, in which the creature attacks the Autobots, and Prime has to decide the moral decision of whether or not to keep the monster alive. At one point, the creature even grabbed Optimus' gun and begged him to kill him. Bear in mind, this is essentially a kid's comic book. In the end, Fix-It separated the two, unfortunately also saving Megatron in the process, though never erasing the horrifying images of the fusion from readers across many years. The final battle with Unicron at the end of the Transformers Marvel comic was utterly devastating for both sides, with a massive amount of characters, old and new, being killed off instantly at the hands of the terrifying Planet Eater. The battle was presented with dark and gritty visuals, with the only true colours being the Transformers themselves, and we got to watch them slowly being put out by the giant Unicron. Despite how hard they fought, many were killed off in tragic ways, such as Brainstorm being skewered on Unicron's finger, or Hardhead being stepped on, as well as Cloudburst being hit and flying into Unicron's eye lasers and destroyed. No mercy was dispatched for anyone during this climactic battle, and it was overall unsettling to read, even after Unicron was defeated, as the body count didn't stop there. Not only was Optimus Prime fatally wounded during the battle and reduced to something as gross looking as this, but Runabout was also eaten by demons despite surviving the battle. Dark. As I've covered before, the Generation 2 comic book is filled with dark and gritty visuals and action, where characters are killed off left and right and no one gets a happy ending. The comic is filled with many terrifying moments for the younger audiences that it aimed at, such as Giaxis destroying the entirety of San Francisco, or when Megatron fell down from Earth's orbit and was left a smouldering wreck with lubricant leaking out of every one of his orifices. Combine that with the fact that Generation 2 had a character exploding in a bowl of flame every two pages and you have one hell of a comic for kids that is bound to give them nightmares. But, let's be honest here, the scariest thing about Generation 2 was the next. The 1986 movie, which depicted the deaths of four main characters in the show, and Starscream, was already shocking enough in itself. But then Optimus Prime himself got axed, and caused an outcry from fans, and also scared the living hell out of kids. So how did the writers counter this problem? By creating the episode Dark Awakening, in which Optimus gets rebuilt by the Quintessons and then attempts to kill all of the Autobots and steal the Matrix. What happens instead is that he regains his consciousness, and flies a ship into the Quintessons, blowing both them and himself up. Uh, yeah, sure, the kids will love it. Last Stand of the Wreckers is one of the darkest comics I have ever read, and is certainly not for the faint of heart. It features death and violence at almost every page, such as Overlord watching two bots tearing each other apart for his enjoyment, or some of the main cast being killed off. For example, Rotostorm being shot in the head, or Pyro torn apart by rabid Decepticons. Yes, Last Stand is certainly not for kids. However, out of all of the scenes in this awesome comic, the most disturbing of all of them was the torture scene featuring three tied down wreckers and a very eager stalker, whom tortured Twin Twist by removing parts of his face and presumably other horrible things while the other two had to watch. Elsewhere, Top Spin felt his brother's pain, and after he sacrificed himself, Twin Twist concurrently died. Disappointed, Stalker moved on to Springer and Impactor, but he was interrupted by Cup and Guzzle and then was brutally executed by Springer. This scene was awfully disturbing, particularly Twin Twist's gruesome face. It was filled with dark colours, blood, and horror, much like the rest of the comic. What is it with Stunticons being zombies that is just so terrifying? Perhaps the scariest moment in all of Transformers Prime came in the episode Thirst, in which Silas, in Breakdown's body, is converted into a Terracon. Breakdown already went through a hell of a lot during Prime, being killed by Arachnid and then having his corpse experimented on by Mech, and eventually had his body taken over by Silas. But in this episode, he's killed even more by being turned into basically a zombie. This episode is a really unnerving one, especially for what is supposed to be a kid's cartoon. We see no Autobots throughout the entire episode, 
Instead, we get to see the Decepticons beginning to panic as Silas goes around infecting Viacons and turning them into Terracons, and sending the ship into lockdown. This episode is dark, and I imagine utterly terrifying for any kids watching, and I have to admit, it even creeped me out a little. But the darkest point of this episode is when Arachnid puts Silas down for good, and both he and Breakdown finally die. Seeing Silas's horribly scarred body is already traumatizing enough, but this was the first time we've ever seen a human die on screen in Transformers. Combining that with the already eerie tone of the episode, and you have some really effective nightmare fuel. The year is 1986. You've been reading an awesome comic book from Marvel for a while now. One that involves two warring factions of giant transformable alien robots. Compared to a lot of things you've seen, it's a tad violent, but nothing too scary or graphic shows up. Until issue 17. In this issue, we visit Cybertron, to discover a conquered by a Decepticon warlord named Straxus. The only hope were a small group of Autobots, though one named Scrounge decides to try and infiltrate the Decepticons. His punishment for doing so was to have his arm torn off, and then thrown into the smelting pool, and he began to melt. The imagery in this issue is horrid and graphic. In one scene, we watch Blaster dive into the smelting pool to try and rescue Scrounge, only to find about half of the bot left. Believing he was of no use to the Autobots before, Scrounge hands Blaster the tapes he acquired, and then his partner was forced to let him die. Blaster would then take out his anger on the Decepticons by firing molten metal at them, taking down as many as he could. This issue reminded us of how grim the reality of war is. It was the first time a character died in the Transformers Marvel comic, and it was incredibly tragic and unsettling. Sure, compared to today's standards, this issue isn't even slightly terrifying. But back then, this was way too much for our young minds to take. Sins of the Wreckers is the sequel to the aforementioned Last Stand of the Wreckers, though it is just as dark, if not even more so, than its predecessor. The entire comic is drawn to be dark and gritty, and everything, EVERYTHING, gets under your skin. Though not as violent as Last Stand, Sins really amps up the creepiness factor, telling the tale of the Wreckers and Verity travelling into a dimension known as the Noise Maze, in search of Prowl and the important data he contains, who has been captured by Tarantulas. Many disturbing moments occur across the five issues, though some highlights include Stakeout, the only character in the entire series who wasn't a violent killer, being crushed between Tidal Wave's transformation cog and eventually passing, Hubcap's demise, Guzzle tearing apart the Chimericons and drinking their Energon, or perhaps the most disturbing of all, the reveal of Roadbuster's past. We finally discover what happened in the bot's past. Tarantulas had shrunk down and gotten into his head, whispering for him to do things, causing Roadbuster to believe there were voices in his head. This led to him sacrificing his cadets to the god of death. Near the climax of the comic, Roadbuster decides to try and take down Tarantulas by himself in order for his teammates to escape the noise maze. It seems that Roadbuster survived, though mere seconds later he began hearing the voices in his head once again. Right before Tarantulas, who had shrunken down into his head, grew to full size and obliterated Roadbuster. Sins was a fantastic comic, but one that was truly disturbing from start to finish. More Than Meets the Eye isn't exactly a comic filled with warm fuzzies, despite it occasionally having very sweet and heartfelt moments. However, despite the brutal violence and thrilling scenes the comic presents us with, none of it was necessarily scary. Until this horrible abomination by the name of Sunder shows up in issue 48 and scared the absolute hell out of me and probably a lot of others reading. Sunder is a nemosurgeon, just like Chrome Dome, but instead of helping people, he tries to kill them. So when Sunder showed up with the Lost Light, accompanied by Freud, it was almost certain he wasn't there to make friends. No, instead he tried going on a murderous rampage, and with his ability that allowed him to turn people inside out, now is a good time to scream, he sent the ship into lockdown, and we cut between the various Lost Lighters attempting to hide from the terrifying being. Watching them cower before the terrifying Sunder, with the dark visuals and shadows, was honestly quite unsettling, and was really fantastically written. Eventually, the Lost Lighters managed to beat Sunder, but watching the guy haunting the ship, hiding in the shadows, taunting them with his black speech bubbles, well, it was absolutely terrifying. Hence why it's at number one on this list.